here we go. Started broadcast. We're now live, Pedro. We're oh live. My goodness. Oh, with usually, the mouse. I usually like to fill the first few seconds with some kind of. Uh, there we go. Until I can see it. It's not official until you can see it. Awesome, dude. Well, thanks for coming in here with me. I titled the video "Grow Mouse and Friend." Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, to everybody out there, I have at least one friend on a Sunday night that'll go live with me. What's up, chat room? I gotta get uh I gotta get the chat. I had one friend on a Sunday night that would go live with me. <laughs> Pager is messing around here, guys. So hey everybody, welcome to the stream. It's a Sunday night. And as I was laying in, in bed watching oh, season God. four episode, no, season seven, episode four of Homeland, I realized there's one place I'd rather be, and that's on YouTube. It's talking to you fine people in the chat room. Will Pedro get set up? Pedro, go ahead and get yourself set up right. There's no hurry. I like to usually hang out with my chat room a little bit, shout, you know, do some shouties and stuff like that. Uh, we got Johnny C in the house, Marcus Kingtree, Stink NYC. What's up, buddy? 420 Fred Groshack. Groshack. Thanks for coming to my defense on Instagram. I don't know where it was or when it was, or maybe it was, you know, maybe it was the round table. Yeah. Something about judging another adult for having two or three alcoholic beverages. And I, I just want to let you know, I really appreciate that, man. I really do. Dr. Purple OG, Stealth Trees, Small Tubes, Remy, Ned669, Rick Green, Bonga Boy, Anthony Harvey, Webman, Jack Frost, Humble Grower, Thomas, Titamas, Alpha Omega, J, One Letter Says It All, Georgia Joe, Dank Nugs, Six String, Beef Power Baby, hashtag Beef Logic. And we're going to get into some Beef Logic a little bit later because I, a, a prophecy, Pedro, an ancient prophecy was sent down from, from centuries ago from the arguably the Mayans. Um, you know, is, is the, the, the culture of people that, that I believe this prophecy came down from. And we're going to get into that Elucidex, chatting it up, wrenching it up, keeping everything kosher. Right, Meow Mix? Meow Mix is in the house. A lot of people from the old Instagram. And Pedro, did you know that Instagram was not just for 14-year-old girls to take selfies of each other? I did. I've, I've been loving my Instagram. You set it up just right according to your likes. and It's awesome, man. How long have you been on Instagram now? Man, really only six or eight months, maybe. So not yeah. very long. Well, Green Gene gave me a nice boost right on day one, got me up to a couple hundred followers right out of the oh, gate. Nice. And, and that was fantastic. Got me that little boost because it's kind of like it's tough to get over that curve. That first 300 followers on Instagram can take a while. But once you kind of get a little critical mass, it's, it's a pretty tight knit community. Uh, you know, we have our little bubble you know, kind of the YouTube Instagram bubble and everybody's generally 95% pretty chill. What's your experience been like on IG? It's actually been really good. Uh, there has been the occasional drama, uh, that, that you try to avoid, but, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, I like the community. So drama gets the drama gets the likes though. It does. Unfortunately, <laughs> it, it, it kind of sucks though, you know, a little bit, but like, I don't, actively go looking for drama on IG, but when I post something dramatic, it gets about mm, usually about 25% more likes or views, but 400% more comments. Oh, wow. Sure. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Anyways, guys, so just to catch you all up on what's going on in this firma chat room and for the folks that are watching this back, not live. Um, well, let me welcome Wookie Kush. Hey, Wookie. Hey, hey what's your, how are you guys doing? Hey, Good. man. Thanks for really appreciate you popping in on, on short notice. Just kind of, hey. No, oh, yeah, of course. Man. I saw your email and then I was, uh, I figured I'd just pop on and take a dab with you guys at least. I got to do a couple things in the garden, but I thought I'd pop on and say, what's up? It ain't illegal. It's not. It's not against the law to pop one of these up and just kind of hang out with some folks that are bored on a Sunday night, right? Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Wookie. Well, Pedro and I, um, I, I hacked a light for Pedro. And for those of you that maybe didn't watch this ancient stream from September, Pedro had some lights and they were um, they were of the Borpal era. But these ones were a cut above. They had some, some M cobs or multi-chip on board in the center. 
surrounded by some epistar colored diodes. It was a very pink look. And I think actually it was a light that was probably a little bit ahead of its time, depending on when it came out. And Pedro, when did you buy that? Was it was, it was a Progro? Yeah, Progro X5500. It's actually the company was Hydroponics Hut, Progro X5500. And, I got a uh, tent from Hydroponics Hut back in the day. They've been around for a while. Uh, yeah, they. I guess well, not no longer. So, oh, so they're out of business. They are out of business now. So um, the light has no replacement parts and no other contact. Okay. Zero. Uh, probably two, two and a half years ago or so, I bought that light. Okay, so it was definitely, it was definitely in there in the upper end of the blurples. Uh, it wasn't even blurple; it was just pink. It was not a horrible color. It wasn't unlike Chill Tech, to, if I can be honest. I can see the similarities, I suppose, in the color, anyways. Well, there were some similarities in the color, but where this Progro departed from the modern grow lights is the heat sinks, guys. I sent them all back to you, Pager. There was nothing I could yeah. do with them. They were literally about if you took a, a some Chinese throwing stars and you <laughs> stacked about four of them up. <laughs> I mean, please tell me if I'm exaggerating. No, not at all. Not a, not a little. Not even a little bit. Half inch thick, guys. Half inch thick heat sinks, about a hundred mil around. It, they were abysmally small. I, a razor thin would not be an exaggeration. And they had so many dizzy bunny fibers and dust <laughs> and all kinds of cat and probably some of Pedro's, you know, no disrespect, but I definitely beard, yeah. detected some some beard hair in there. I, I imagine I so. I yeah. Imagine. So obviously some stuff started to kind of burning out and everything. So I did the hack. Okay. 20 minutes later into the story, I hacked the light. And here's what I did with it, guys. I took it from 500 watts down to about 420 watts. And that and that was just not necessarily by choice. That's just the way the voltage is kind. I wasn't able to utilize all the voltage. I had to swap a mean well out for something else. And what it ended up with was four varos on the corners, the 36 volt varos, which I can't even, I don't know if that's A, Q, R, G, B, or C. But what <laughs> I watched my old stream and I was like, I was, I was telling this guy he was wrong and I was the idiot that was wrong. But anyway, some 36, 38 volt Varos are, are around the perimeter. And then I have a 200 watt chilled board in the center on two separate drivers with just some, you know, manual knobs. And I chose to thermally bond some CPU coolers to this plate. Uh, I fabricated a plate on my table saw out of aluminum, and that was going to be this like heat spreader, and everything is thermally bonded to it so that the fans kind of cooled everything evenly. Well, I, I used a very robust two-part epoxy and uh, packaged the thing like a tank, but USPS just kind of banged it around. One of the heat sinks popped off. So we're going to be working on a repair tonight, guys and girls. Cheers, bros. Cheers, Wookie. I, I don't really have a dab, but I have a little big pen. <laughs> I don't either. I'm flower only tonight for the stream. The cool thing, if I might add, that I like about this particular stream is, and Dizzy always, like she always tells me, no, you're not, but I'm, I'm a kind of a dumb redneck. I don't do this kind of stuff. So when it came, I, I kind of panicked. I was like, ah, I don't know what to do, Mouse. And he suggested that we do this live. And I think it's really kind of a cool thing because you're going to get to see someone who has no experience doing this, fixing something that, I don't know, you know, you know what I'm saying? That shouldn't need fixing in the first place <laughs> if I would have built well, it right and you s and screwed everything in. The problem well, was there wasn't a lot of real estate on those CPU cores to get screws in. And I'm sorry. Yeah, I can. No, that's fine. I was going to say to, to your defense, three of the four are still intact. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, that'll get you through high school right there, baby. <laughs> that'll get you right the way through high school. Um, so, Wookie, if you don't mind, let me um, let, let, let me help Pedro get into the first part of this repair uh, so that we can kind of have some conversations, talk to our chat room, answer some questions and stuff like that. And then the, po the epoxy will be setting up. And hey, who knows? By the end of this deal, maybe we can watch this light do what it was intended to do. Dude, I'll tell you right now, I have not seen this light fire up zero i tried to watch your live stream and it cut out i don't know if you should turn it on or not but it cut out like 22 25 minutes i haven't seen this thing on at all period that was when instagram was messing up it it was like it was like i had some kind of 
you know, I don't want to make a, a poor joke, but the, you know, Parkinson's or something like that. It was like I had Parkinson's. It was, it was, and then it just crashed. But, um, well, so let's get it rolling here, Pedro. I'm going to grab my epoxy. So we're talking the same language here. Give me just a sec. No worries. No worries. I, I hope I have everything in front of me to make this happen. Um, I noticed a white square there on your table. Is that a wax piece of parchment or wax paper? Cardboard. Would you like Cardboard. it to be, would you like it to be parchment? Uh, it, since this is just one repair, uh, cardboard is a little bit more wasteful of the of the thermal epoxy because it just kind of some soaks in. Uh, I'm usually pretty chintzy with it since it's seven bucks for this little tube, but oh, cardboard will be fine. Okay. Yeah, I did. I was trying to be kind of preparation, but I do have in my reach, like you said, I'm not going to be saving the epoxy probably for a future repair. So. All right. So for everybody that's just now joining us here in chat, welcome. Thanks for swinging on in. And uh, for people watching this back on the live, we're uh, repairing a light that some idiot named Gromouse built, and it couldn't even survive shipping. So we're having to do a little repair. Now, here's where I made a mistake. Um, I should have attached these piece, uh, CPU coolers that I'm using for heat sinks for these Veros uh, with some screws. There just wasn't a whole heck of a lot of real estate on them because they had this copper thermal transfer pad on the bottom, real thin piece of copper. And, you know, so I just glued them down with this stuff. And this stuff is called Arctic Alumina Thermal Adhesive. So this is unlike the thermal pastes that you might be familiar with, like a grease. This is actually a sticky product, like almost like a JB Weld. And it's part A, part B, you mix them up in equal parts and there's a little spatula that comes with it. And um, it works really well to adhere metal materials like aluminum, copper, whatever, but it also transfers the heat into whatever the substrate or base plate is. So that's what we're going to be doing. So Pedro, what you're probably going to want to do, um, and, and these lines come out pretty thin, they come out about an eighth inch wide. You can kind of squeeze them out. I would squeeze them out into about a quarter inch diameter tube. And I would actually, I would, I would go a good, uh, let's call it two and a half inches. But the trick is you do a spiral with the first one, leaving a gap in the center, not a tight spiral, but a nice loose spiral. And then with part B, you come through and you fill in the gap of the spiral. And then it's just a lot easier to mix. That's my little trick. Okay. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that now. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Now, have you cleaned the, the, the uh, adjoining spaces with alcohol or anything by chance? I, I have not. No, what I've that done would probably be a good. That would definitely be a good first thing. So what Pedro did with this repair is first he had to chisel off all the thermal that I put on there, and um, it had and then sand it down a little bit so there's no high spots. You really want a nice grit. I would say if you're adjoining two pieces of material, you would probably want like a 60 grit or something like that. Uh, 60, 80 grit, kind of scuff everything up, get some uh, more surface area for it to attach clean everything with alcohol. You can glue your cobs down with this stuff, but it is pretty flipping permanent. I mean, you need like literally a chisel and a hammer to ding, ding, ding this stuff off. So it's pretty much permanent, but it saves you from having to drill and tap and, you know, and cob holders are about three bucks or two fifty. So it saves a little money, but it's not very flexible when you need to do a repair. If you're having trouble getting a, a cob off with those, you can just ship it to yourself with U USPS and I'll take it right off for you. <laughs> That's true. That's um, so like in true DIY, a redneck DIY style, I do not have any clean alcohol, isopropyl, or uh, or my 95 because Dizzy's making some, some RSO. So no alcohol. May I ask you this question? Yes, you may. <laughs> Do you even dab, bro? <laughs> I, you don't have alcohol? <laughs> I Well, yes, we have three bottles of alcohol over here, but they're all slightly tainted with a little bit of cannabis oil. I think that's, that. that I mean, that's in an air-cooled, active-cooled LED like this, I think that sounds fragrantly delicious. Okay, are you sure that's all right? <laughs> yeah. Because I can do that. All right, I can do that. <laughs> Honey, will you hand me one of those bottles, please? And I apologize, my dog in true Pedro fashion, loves golf balls, and she is wanting to play right now. So, No, we're not talking like Swamp Thang green, are we? We're, are we just talking like a light hint margarita colored green, or what are we talking here? It looks kind of like, uh, it looks kind of like apple pucker. Oh, okay. So, well, I guess, what you know, hey, everybody in chat, <laughs> we're going to find out right here live <laughs> on the Grow Mouse and Friends show 
<laughs> is it cool just to like use your trim scissor alcohol when you're messing with DIY shit? We're going to find out. That's going to be awesome. So it's okay. We can do this. Real quick. Mix that up. Check that out. Clean it up. All that. Let me, let me get back with my chat room real, okay. real quick here. We got Gro Koski in the house and Stink NYC has a message for you, Pedro. He says, get it together, dude. <laughs> Seriously. Woody, Woody. Always hanging out in chat. Quality matters. What's up? Mike's Atomic Skier, one of the first guys in here, pre-show. What's up, buddy? Lucidex still holding it down. Small tubes, silent grower. Shh. Yana Suitas. Federico Perrin. Hola, mi amigo. And John Del Pickle coming over from Instagram. He just can't get enough. Can't get enough, homeboy. All right, so how are we doing, Pedro? Have we, um, have we reached a sterile semi- We've got a sterile, yeah, semi-sterile cannabis oil. Hey, guys, I, I got to go take some clones and, and do some garden work, but uh, I, I might pop back on if you guys are still going for a little while. Yeah, buddy, get your, uh, you know, grower's job. is always in the grow room first, right? Roger that. All right, buddy. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, man. See you later. All righty, folks. So um, a lot of y'all are already experimenting experimenting with Vero 29s and other chip on boards. And uh, you probably already know this, but there's a couple of version Vero. There's the version that's the SE, which is uh, which is the Pokin style. It's a lot like a Cree with the Cree cob holder, but it's got the cob holder integrated. So it's a much more affordable product, arguably similar performance product to the Cree. And that's why everyone's talking Vero's right now. And not so many people are spending the extra seven, 10, what, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, maybe even for a Cree 3590 when you can get a Vera 29 for 25 to 30 bucks. We talked about talked about them a little bit last time. And there's two styles. There's the Pokin style. And then there's the other style that has solder points on it. And something called a Molex Pico. I think it's called the Molex Pico Mate or Pico Easy Mate. And that's what Pedro's got. That is and I these mean. things, if I can be honest, Pedro, I am shocked. I am shocked that this freaking thing didn't rip these tiny little 28 gauge wires right out of the holder. So that is exactly what happened. The, oh, that is. The white plastic thing that you're holding there, was it still attached? That to little thing cob. was still attached to the cob. The okay. wires were out. The wires were out. Okay. So that's, a, I mean, look, I'll be honest with you guys. I mean, they'll work. If, if you really like, if you're like agoraphobic, about whatever the soldering version of a phobia is, like if you're just, you won't leave the house, you won't touch a soldering iron, then go ahead and use these things. Or my thought, if, my thought was, how the fuck did you get those wires in there when I first saw that? Yeah, I, I it, here's the deal, dude. I, I don't even have an excuse. I'm actually kind of a little bit ashamed, if I can be honest. You know, I had your flipping light for five months. <laughs> I had med growers before that for six months and I'm just like, uh, why can't I, you know, if, if I don't so know, mi dude. mix this up, right? Yeah. Mix it up. That looks, that looks Sorry. You don't care about my excuses. You just, you just want your light to no, make I just light. Want, I just want to make sure this doesn't like set up and we miss a step or something. I process. think six string in chat is, is very eloquently and precisely summing up the situation. Yep. Those Pico Connect suck ass, dude. And I think that's it's true. Okay, so that's set in there. Yeah, that's set in there. Okay, so uh, you've got that on there. Okay, um, go ahead and oh, did did you mix it up already? I did. Okay, and you applied it to the heatsink. I have not. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Leave it sit. But now go ahead thing. and I have not. I have not stripped the other end of my connectors either. You don't, no, you don't need to. We'll do that on the inside of the light. So okay. what you're going to need to do is go ahead and insert the Pico into the cob. And the way you'll know is on the cob, it has a plus and a minus. I believe the positive side's left. So just align the red wire, you know, with the positive. And you're going to need something small, like a, like a small flathead or a key or a coin to get this thing in. And, and the way it goes in, it doesn't go straight down in. It kind of goes. I watched a front. video. Yeah, it goes kind of like in at an angle and then kind of pops down and then you put a little screwdriver or a coin down on there and it like you can hear a tiny little pop. 
and then it's in there. Uh, yeah, I apologize. Let me, uh, here we go. What are you apologizing for? Oh, Mike's atomic skier reminded me I had the camera focused on me. So oh. we're going back to you here. I don't want people to watch me. This is somewhat time sensitive. I should have probably mentioned that. It's five yeah, minutes. You, oh, yeah. you should, you should have. Is it gumming up already? I don't know. I'm not looking at it. I thought the wire was already in there. I'm sorry. It's all right. So that's. Yeah. yeah. Snap it in there and then use something. Oh yeah. It's uh, snapped. It's snapped in there. Oh yeah. Okay. Now. Um, See what you're saying. Pull it back a little bit or is it good? It's good. It's good. As long as it, as long as it pops down flat, you should be oh, good. Yeah, it's okay. Sure. Now go ahead and align. You see how I've routed out a little groove in the yep. heat sink. Go ahead and align that with the groove in the plate, making sure that the wire has some little room so it's not touching the metal. Yep. I see. Yep. That here. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead and line that up and go ahead and, and put it down in the plate. Do you want me to put the epoxy on here first? Oh, I thought you put the epoxy. Nope. Yeah. Put the epoxy on there first. Sorry. 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 This is total redneck. I told you. No, it's okay. It's, um, well, your show's HD, but probably it's just a little far away or the light may be a little low. I, yeah, I could have got closer, but. Don't worry so much. Don't worry about how it looks. You know, you can just goop it on there. We're going to kind of give it a little quarter twist back and forth. Oh, okay, cool. Spread it out. So, uh, yeah. Is it still pretty, is it viscous or is it still pretty fluid? It's a little, it's a little pasty. It's coming up a little. Okay. So we got maybe another minute. Okay. All right. She's on there. All right. Go ahead and cool. align it. Yeah. Just align the grooves, just ensuring that the wires sit in those grooves. Uh -huh. Yeah, that looks good. Give it a little kind of squish around and a pretty firm pr pressure, just making sure that you don't bind up the wires against the metal. This is a first in listener land. Well, no, I don't know. I guess there've been other uh, LED repairs before, but. All right, she's sitting in there. All right, the should wires, be. Little quarter turn, squishy, squishy. Yeah. She's square. Okay, cool. Uh, clear that stuff off the table and pull that cob out to the edge of the table so you can look underneath it and check to make sure it's kind of centered in the hole and not squished off to one side. And then we'll let that sit and we'll hang out. We'll get back up with the chat room. Yeah, there we go. She's centered now. Yeah, eyeballed, you know. And there's a little goopy. It doesn't matter if there's a little goopy coming through, right? No, nah, that's okay. That's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, you can take, if you have a Q-tip handy, you can take a Q-tip with some alcohol and kind of wipe it with one side and then come back with the dry side. But I uh, just if you want to look perfect. Um, you want your grow lights looking good, everybody, I do, right? Let me go grab something, I'll be right back. I like when people include a picture of their light with their canopy, you know? I mean, I love the bud shots too, but I like to see that light, you know? It's like half the time when people are measuring themselves, to, I, I think probably 90% of the time, all right, I'm going to edit that one more. Let's try this one more time. I think about 80% of the time when you're measuring yourself to another grower, you know, looking at their shit and saying, how does that look in compared to my stuff? Your first question 80% of the time is what kind of light are you using, right? And then I think it's, um, oh, are you are you growing with uh, synthetic or no-till or, or synthetic or LOS or whatever? And I think those are the two questions. Chat. Please let me know what you think. 60 30, 70 30. <laughs> that will further the fact. First one only ended up to 90. Okay, so that was a trick question. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, Pater has disappeared. I thought he was just on the floor inspecting the light. Now he's, oh, there he is. Okay. I'm back. Kind of. All right. Oh, you got a lob mic. I do. It's a, oh, that's got cool. a 30 foot effing cable which is a little precarious but that's all right all right <laughs> stabby mcstabwood half the time grow mouse gets his analogies right a hundred percent of the time small oh, teams, 40 oh. and 20 adds up to 60 bro how harsh is chat being on me right now no chat's cool chat's cool we're just uh good you know we're just 
talking about percentages. No, I was telling the chat room, I was proposing that half the time when, you, when you're judging you know, your stuff next to another grower or you're measuring yourself to another grower, I propose that your question is like, what kind of light is he using? That's like the most important variable difference between you and me or me and him. Is that my door or yours? Are you hearing the knock? Yeah, I'm hearing the knock. Oh, that's the golf ball. Okay. This is All the right, third so golf ball that I have removed from my dog's mouth in this strip <laughs> live stream. All right. So, um, yeah, so we'll, let's let that set up a good little bit here, a good 10, 15 minutes before we even start tugging on the wires, you know, let it set up. So I should, one thing that I do not have at my ready that I will need to go grab is a pair of wire strippers. Should I go grab that quick? Um, yeah, let me check in with my chat room and you grab some wire strippers because we'll definitely need those. Okay. Sounds good. I'll be definitely right Definitely need those. So that's what Grow Mouse looks like. Yeah, man. Ever since I moved out here to uh, Washington State, um, I just figured why wear a 12-pound helmet? the battery pack in it, you know, and I don't really need to disguise my identity anymore, but I still wear it sometimes just for fun. You know, I wore it on the round table a month ago. So, and I still have it. I'll, uh, I might build another one at some point with cooler, like addressable LEDs. Who knows? Uh, what else do we got going on in chat? Shredder. Welcome, buddy. What's going on? What's going on? Nutrient shootouts. What's up? Uh, do we have a question coming in? Let's see. So what do you guys think of those Vera oh, Vesta strips with uh, 2,705 K on the same strip? I'm thinking of making a small DIY light with them. I think that's cool. You know, I think, I think mixing 2,705 K or 2,704 K is, is great to get a nice ba uh, balance spectrum. If you just want to have like a single channel and I'm going to assume those strips are just one channel, one positive and one negative. If the two are on, um, separate channels so you could control the 27 and the five i mean that'd kind of be the ultimate right because then you'd have this perfectly even distribution of not only like photons but also the the spectrum you know as opposed to having them spread out and they're getting hit from 27k from this side and 5k from this side not that that's a problem i mean i've had lights like that but uh no i haven't heard of the best of strips though so can't help you there chronicle your neck your neck muscles look fab thanks chronicles if you can't tell i'm wearing a neil degrasse tyson t-shirt and it says you matter you matter unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light squared then you energy <laughs> get it e equals mc squared nah all right, LucidX, I have a question. When are you going to get the garden back up and running? Huh? huh. Um, man, dude, uh, uh, I'm gonna. I'll get to that one in a second. Uh, Trevor Bull, when will you guys be getting PCBs back at Chilled? Uh, people have been asking me to build lights. I literally just need the PCBs that are attached to heat sinks. I have 100 feet of uh, wire. Um, we have them. We have them. Um, in fact, I'll just tilt my screen slightly. We're we're mounting. Oops. Well, I can't. I got this locking arm, but we're mounting them all. Um, we just got a brand new fresh employee on um, last week uh, after having a guy leaving um, fairly abruptly. So that kind of set us back in the month of January. Uh, excuse me, February. Uh, we got this new guy. He's a, a technical guy. He used to work for a wire harness company, and he's real fast, and he's making modules like a mug. And um, I'm helping out with the modules and obviously the other operations at Chilled. Um, as soon as humanly possible, um, each PCB has to be broken off the whole big thing. And then we test all the channels Then we deburr the back and, uh, you know, like certify it. Um, so just give me a little more time. I don't want to peg myself down in, until we get some, uh, some orders out that have been pending soon. Stealth trees, grow mouse, the plants are calling. Oh yes, 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 yes. Okay. Lucidex's original question, the garden, I yearn for it. Elucidex, I yearn hard. And, um, you know, I just checking on something every day, it, it makes you excited. It makes you excited about life, about the living things that you're growing and reproducing. And, and just, you know, it's like a lot of people have different levels of purpose, sense of purpose, but it just every day it gives you the sense of purpose. And I miss the living hell out of it. But um, there's also that like 
chasing the dragon issue, you know, that I think some of us, especially that have gotten addicted to DIY are just kind of chasing that dragon, you know, the next thing, the next build, whatever. And so I just setting up a tent, no disrespect to tent growers, you know, it's a means to an end, but I just, a tent doesn't excite me, dude. You know, I need a room or a shipping container or something dope, you know, something just next, next. And that's what I want to, if I'm going to sink my time into something, I'm going to sink my time into something worth it. You know, something that's going to inspire me and inspire people and just help me think of new projects, find new needs, new niches in the grow room. And so if that takes another six months, then that's what it takes. But, you know, I'm ready to lay down some roots here in Washington state. It's a cool place. Uh, the winter wasn't that flipping bad, dude. I, I can handle some rain. The summer was Oh, que bella. I can't wait for summer again. So I think I'm going to lay down some roots here, man. I just want to get set up right. And trust me, everything that you missed, I will bring back to you tenfold cooler. Malik, what's up, bro? How's it going, man? Amen. Amen to you, son. Good to see you, man. Shredder, I feel you. I'm trying to get out of this damn tents, man. Well, let's talk about tents for a minute. If you have to wait, you got to wait. How long? We will. Um, DOG, what's up, DOG? Holler at me. I got to connect on some pods. I think I sent you the link to this stream. Feel free to pop in, DOG, if you'd like. Um, but yeah, I'm getting back with all my people next week. Uh, I got with Mr. Incog tonight. We set up some stuff. So yeah. Um, some of us in Colorado got to pitch our tents. I want to talk about tents when Pedro gets back and he is back. I'm back. Pedro, well, can we talk about tents for a little bit? Yeah, sure. What do you want to talk about? Well, you know, I've grown in tents before, and let me tell you the problem with tents. Um, it's hard to get good airflow in them, and if you're counting on light leakage not being a problem in or out, you know, there's some definitely some small issues there that you got to work through, and regulating temperature. You know, it's it's tough. You got a small volume of air. You're trying to regulate that volume of air with with some kind of hopefully controllable exhaust fan. And you got, I don't know, the I see these guys using these sensor pushes and these sawn off devices, and they're all there's up like up and down like the stock market, uh, you know, on their data logging stuff. So can what's you run a tent? What's the secret? Is there a secret? Uh -huh. I actually don't run tents anymore. I've, I've disposed of everything. And I know I haven't been doing updates and it is what it is, but no, dude, it sucks. It's hard. It's really tough. Um, it was a constant battle. And like you kind of said, you have the spikes in the valleys, essentially what you do with your, you know, with your, with your peaks and your valleys is you just end up getting an average and you try to maintain or get that average to be as small as you can, you know, with your humidity spikes and your temp or your temperature spikes and, in the whole nine yards. Um, that's why I had powder mildew at one point in time because it, it, it drops temperature real quick and you spike your humidity and oh shit, you have powdery mildew. Um, so yeah, isn't powdery mildew much more common in, in tents? I, in my experience, it was. You know, half the people that I see that are really pulling nice harvests consistently out of tents, they run the tents open pretty much like they have the flaps the you know, the front flaps kind of at a, a triangle, the little opening down below. And they really just use the tent as a substrate because they're renting an apartment. They don't want to put a bunch of holes in the drywall and then, you know, carrying lumber and two by fours inside an apartment. And then somebody's got to carry that crap out. So they just put up a tent because it's a it's an infrastructure, you know, yeah. and it gives you some level of kind of you know you're not just hanging out there with with weed plants in your apartment you've got it you know kind of confined if if the maintenance man came over you could zip up and put some old quilts over it you know whether you're in a legal state or not so i think there's a lot of like benefits to a tent a lot of generalities well that's what we're doing tishmack we're kind of generally talking about tents i mean not to get defensive but um maybe we should get a little more specific into tents i mean i will tell you i have had a cheap grow tent and I'm not going to sling mud. It might not have been the one from Hydroponics Hut. It might have been the one from LED Wholesalers off of eBay. But I had one putting off so many VOCs or it was off-gassing is what it what it was. It was like the PVC or or whatever it was the, the tent was made of. It was off-gassing like crazy. And the plants were unhealthy, man. Seedlings would just like kind of just 
you know? You ever had a grow tent so cheap and so crappy it was off gassing for like months at a time? Oh yeah. They just smell. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, exactly. So those are like, you know, maybe eighty dollar tents. What about the like eight hundred dollar tents? I mean, like gorilla grow tents, are they worth the extra cheese? I mean, if we're never gonna get specific one. about grow tents. No, you never had one? Never had one. Never what had do you one. run? Uh, I have Lighthouse Hydro actually right now. Pretty good. Well, and I don't use them anymore. No, the zippers failed in about uh about thirteen months. Thirteen months. Ah, uh, you know. What do you I mean, how long does one expect to get out of a grow tent? That's I guess that is a question. And let's assume a person could expect a gorilla grow tent to last five to seven years. Um, you know, having a badass tent consistent for that five to seven years or buying multiple tents that suit your needs. It's it's always been kind of hard for me to justify kind of getting into the little more expensive tents. But I do see the value in the height and the adjustability. But can I can I tell you one final problem that I have with tents, Pedro? Yeah. We've been talking about them for less than 10 minutes. I'm already bored out of my fucking mind That's talking about idea. tents. Like, no offense to tent growers. I don't mean to like be a high horse or anything, but it's a tent, man. It's a it's a tool to get the job done, you know? It's hard to get too uh, juiced up about them. So you're How's probably going to be... Up? Uh, I don't really want to touch it, but... Give but it you're probably yeah, mad at little... me because I don't, I don't have... It seems pretty solid. I don't have, uh, I could not find my fucking wire strippers. Hence the nervous to go live with mouse. <laughs> Dude, it's all, it's just an impromptu thing. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's honestly just a play. It's just, you know, to get up on the computer instead of watching yeah. Netflix and, you know, let people kind of hang out, you know, on a Sunday night, talk grow. Um, what do we got in here? We got about, wow, we got a good crowd in here. We got 417 people. That's fantastic. Especially That's for I have live. Oh, 420. Sir Dabs a lot. What's up, man? Chiefs a lot. What's up? John Jonah Jameson. <laughs> you tried to get me. John Jonah. Okay, you got me. Got you. Uh, <laughs> Shutter's still in the house. Craig Wilson's here. Tents have their advantages, but obviously not the best. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right, Craig. You got some advantages there, but shipping containers are so much more interesting. Tishmac, okay, you've redeemed yourself. Sorry about my defensiveness there, but you have fully redeemed yourself. Yeah, shipping containers are really interesting, aren't they? And there's actually yeah, a lot yeah. of shipping container haters out there. Pedro, when you were thinking about getting, weren't you get, thinking about getting a shipping container? I was. And what was um, your thought process there? Um, insulating was insulating and dealing with the the changes in temperature here in Colorado. We get some pretty crazy temperature swings. And uh, those two things were, were really scaring me away from uh, choosing a uh, shipping container. There are some pretty good options out there, but just maybe a little scared. Well, you know, Colorado's pretty far inland. Um, quite, well, pretty much almost about as far as you can get, unless you're talking Kansas. But um, what kind of costs were we looking at there? Because, I mean, in Houston, L.A., Florida, dude, cheap, dirt cheap. Hell, even here in Seattle, they're pretty cheap. Uh, you for a for a full size decent one. You're looking about thirty six hundred dollars. For okay, so we're talking about a forty foot standard Connex. Correct. Not a high cube. Nope. Okay, so we're talking about an eight foot by eight foot by forty foot box. You got it. Thirty six. That's well, that's there. up there. Is it thirty six hundred? Yeah, they're about twenty eight to thirty two hundred. You know, obviously for the people out there, I know there's a lot of you people that know a lot about shipping containers. So I'll, I'll try my best. There's um, uh, what is it? Single trip, one trip, seaworthy. There's some specific yeah. terms there for is. these. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, wind and water tight. Okay, wind and water tight is your barrier entry. Um, not your lowest bottom bin, but not quite. Mid shelf. This let's call it lower mids. Okay, wind and water tight is your lower mids. They're definitely the cheapest. And if you want it to blend in with your surroundings in an industrial area or a farmland agricultural setting, wind and water tight is all you need. It's going to look like it's been on that farm for two, three decades, and nobody's going to look at it twice because dudes, there's people are storing stuff in those all up and down the West Coast. Oh yeah. Uh, at least from my observations. Even out here, they are. 
Yeah, hell yeah, dude. If you want to go, you know, one trip, which means it was manufactured overseas, they pack some stuff in it, they send it to the US, that's one trip, that's going to be the most expensive, obviously, other than brand new. And those one trips and the brand new, those are the ones you want to be looking into for your living room of your tiny home or your container house. You know, you might you might want that patina on the outside. It, it, that would be the only exception. But if you want, you know, a nice, you know, brand new exposed metal uh, shipping container for your home, you want one trippers. But anyway, out here, they're like 3200 at the most expensive and 28, 26, 2800 at the cheapest. And that's even for a high cube, which is what? Eight foot seven inches. Yeah, is it not, almost nine, something like that. Almost nine feet, something like that. So a high cube for a grower, uh, even if it's six hundred dollars more, like <laughs> what grower wouldn't pay six hundred dollars to get an extra, you know, foot of grow space? Right. Anyway, yeah. um, but I think they're very interesting. A lot of people hate on them because you got to put some money in them, man. I mean, definitely on the insulation side, um, spray foam. Yeah, it would be great. It's not super duper essential though. Um, you put a nice vapor barrier down, um, you maybe get some recycled material like recycled blue jeans or something, uh, or even fiberglass, you know, use metal studs. I could totally see that being, is it nine foot six? Okay. Cannabis Mantis says nine foot six is the high boy or the high cube. Whew, dude, totally worth it. Totally worth it. Oh, Matt, Mattager's in here. Welcome manager from the sub cool radio. I'm telling you guys, I'll send you the info on these pods. They are badass. The pods are customizable and you can connect them together. Uh, right on, DOG. Yeah, I'll check that out, man. Although some of these companies that are making these ready-made shipping containers, you know, they're much greater than the sum of their parts. Let's put it that way. I mean, you know, you you people say this all the time, but you could buy this for this. But, you know, when it when we're talking 20 grand in in equipment plus a couple hundred hours labor and it's a $75,000 you know, grow cube, not talking about this company specifically, but there's ones out there. It's like, where's the other 40 or 50 G's go, man? Is that all profit? Is that all labor? Some of them are like, you know, pretty up there markup wise. How are we looking, Pedronius? I have got both ends of the wires here stripped and my mind is drifting towards what I'm going to tape them together with because I'm not an electrician. And I don't have any electric. That's okay. Did you get these little orange devices called Wagos in your package from Rapid LED? I, I did. I thought that they were for nothing. No, they're uh, cleverly thought of by me to get out to you because um, they're awesome. For this, now, for, for specifically this purpose? <laughs> specifically this purpose. Uh, I think they ran me about 30 cents a piece. Uh, you can get them as low as you know 19 cents a piece when you buy a big pack are from they Amazon. Are they the same? They're the same. Yeah, so they're two identical, and this is the specific model number is the Wago 221. And um, it's just a way of putting two like wires together, you know. So your red and your red would go on one Wago, and then your black and your black would go on the other. And it's as simple as just determining the link that you need from the new cord to the old cord, cut them down, and splice them together, and you'll be in business. Um, it says uh, cleverly on the side of these Wagos, they usually have a strip length indicator for like the optimal, you know, perfect usage of it. And it says 11 millimeter strip on it. And uh, so that's the perfect uh, strip length. So you can also measure it, Pedro, up against, there's a little miniature 11 millimeter rule or you can measure it right up on there and then just trim away the excess if you strip long. And uh, so go slower because I'm done. <laughs> I have one in each hand. Okay, yeah. So both red going here and both black going here, that doesn't make sense. No, that's that's the way it works. Yeah. So you're splicing together um the reds and the black wires, the positive and negatives of the cob. And um this just it's like a wire nut. It's a wire it's exactly like a wire nut, but instead of twisting a wire nut, you just close these levers. That's all it is. So red goes to red, black goes to black. So do I need um, to open them before I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's, it's like a little Chinese finger trap, almost kind of. You stick your, little, it's like a mouse trap. Yeah, spring those levers up, and you got an eleven millimeter strip guide on the side to show you how long to strip it. Yeah. So that looks to me like uh, just shy of a half inch, probably a little, a little more than three eighths, a little shy of a half inch strip. 
Can you make Pedro light up? <laughs> yeah, Shredder. It's a little, a li it's a little grainy from my view, but at least you can kind of see him in there doing. His I don't thing. want you all to see what I'm doing. No, you're looking good, dude. No one can even really see that. Good. Close. I hope they can. And it doesn't matter if you've left a little extra length, Pedro. Okay. You know, we can always use a cable tie. Um, it's a little frustrating when you cut them too short. You don't have much to you work to cut with. Cut the wires. I'm not planning on cutting the wires very short at all. The only thing I'm worried, I'll just, I'll just uh, tie them inside the device or inside the light here, so that they stay away from that fan. Yeah. I, don't, I definitely don't want to cut the wires because that would scare me to get them too short. When you don't have wire strippers, you use your teeth. Yeah. At least I do. These little wires in here are skinny as shit. Should I strip them down to the fatter wires? No, dude. Uh, yeah, the skinny wires. Uh, mm -hmm. You just cut that off, man. You're gonna have to cut that. You're gonna have to cut that whole end off. Oh, okay. So go down to you, the fatter wire. Yeah, go down. Yeah, I mean, do you see what's going on here? You just replaced only the connector side to the cob, right? Mm -hmm, Since mm -hmm. the connector ripped off. Okay, yeah. Okay, you got it. Okay, you're good. Yeah, um, I just have this here. Let's let's do this. So I have these two left over. These okay. are the that are on the cob right now. Longest. Okay. So I have these two left over, but they have these little tiny ass wires still on here. Yeah. So you should see the black heat shrink attaching yep. those little ones. Cut below that. Cut below that heat shrink. Yeah, that should be a good spot. And I'm gonna cut back one little twist tie here because otherwise it's gonna be too tight. Yeah, that's no problem. I use extra twist ties. Oh, I just realized you're stripping wire with the utility knife. Yeah, how nice is that? It's definitely a technique. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a scary technique, I'll tell you. It's that. a little bit of a technique, dude. If I I'm used honest. to I used to install stereo or stereos back in the day, stereo equipment in vehicles. Uh, believe it or not, and I used to use uh, uh, knives like this all the time. But it's not working so well now. Oh, hey, why don't I just grab this? See, this is what I say redneck like a motherfucker. Okay. Are you laughing over there yet, Mouse? No, no, dude. This is that's exactly how I do it. And, um, yeah. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate oh, thanks. you making me not feel super dumb, though. Shout out to Ira Random. Thanks, boss. The sauce is the boss. It puts the lotion in the Mars kit. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Fumador is just known for his yeah. fuego remarks. What did he say now? He says, it puts the lotion in the Mars kit or it gets the fuego <laughs> again. <laughs> uh, perfectly geeky for our sense of humor. Cheers to you, Fumador. Gromas, I sent you some pics to use email of cool room setup. Oh, sounds good, Trevor. I'll take a look out for that, man. I feel like such a fucking unprepared dude right now. Quality matters. And Mass, you thought this was the first time. <laughs> uh, cheers. All right. Man, this makes me nervous, Pedro. Like, I dude, can it see makes me the, nervous. Don't, it, don't look. Don't I mean, look. Hey, something here. about the reflection well, no, no, coming no, off of that watch, razor sharp razor watch. blade. There, there. It's, it's, we're, we're okay. We'll put these away. Uh, no, I'm not. I mean, you got to, dude, you got to use what you can use, especially when you can't get your face in there to like give it the old horror. You I, know? And I have a really nice fucking pair of strippers too that my electrician buddy dropped off. And I, I'm sorry. Ooh, I'm electricians always have the best tools, dude. It was a cool one. They always have the best tools, I'll tell you. Okay. I did see a very nice pair of wire strippers at Home Depot by Milwaukee. They looked razor sharp. Um, they were 20 bucks, though. I didn't buy them, but. Okay. So in here goes both blacks, correct? Correct. Okay. Lift up. Yep. Go ahead and insert the first wire uh, and just you know push it all the way in there and close its lever. Well, they don't like... Hey, uh, you have to like hold them up. 
Yeah, well, you, there it's kind of like two points. There's like you pull it up and then you pull it a little past up and it kind of locks in. Oh, it, oh, it did. That would have been much easier if I had known that. Yeah, that's okay. Those little technical things, I just, sorry. Okay, it's, so both it's one of this. Yeah, put the black in, close the lever, and give it a little tug test. Make sure you're good and there. make sure that the insulation is um, going all the way yeah. into the connector. Yes, it yeah. is. And, they're, okay, and it cool. is not pinched by the connector itself. So, but it is not okay. exposed anywhere. Yes. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, just okay. for the chat room, obviously, with these Wagos, you know, you don't want any conductors sticking out past the Wago, especially in an, in an aluminum and steel housing like this. Uh, you could get a short. Uh, so, yeah, we'll do the same with the red, both sides, and give it a These little are tug. Really, really nice, dude. That's why everybody digs them. I mean, some people <laughs> hate on them a little bit. I've had some YouTube comments actually where people have criticized my use and recommendation of Wago connectors. Um, and, and I think their criticism is, is warranted. But I will tell you, I haven't had a Wago fail on me unless I've tripped over a cord while building it. And I have never had a problem with them. Uh, they're just so easy for quick splices. So I'm just going to stick that back there, stick that back there. Yeah, I, I mean, I think these yeah, are going to be in a, the way. A cable tie or a bread tie would be nice just to kind of get everything cinched together a little bit. Um, yeah, let me step off camera one more time here. That's okay, Pedro. And I'm totally not making fun of you. But uh, okay. it, it puts me in the mindset of people that aren't into this shit. Exactly, it does. But right. I think it's an important skill. Okay, I'll see you in a second. Uh, I think it's an important skill that even if you don't intend on building anything, it's an important skill to have when you need to repair something. Like Pedro has a light that you know the company went out of business less than two years from him buying the light. I don't know what the warranty period was. Uh, maybe it was less than that, but... You know, you got to know how to fix shit, electrical stuff, especially. So, uh, but it is funny when guys don't have the basics, right? <laughs> like wire strippers and they're stripping with a box cutter, uh, cable ties. I mean, aren't on the ready. I got two on my desk right here. It's just funny. I'm not judging or high horsing, but it's just funny. I don't know. You guys in chat room, do you guys keep cable ties on like in your, uh, on your office desk? He finds them. We gotta yes, make sir. this. Thing. All right. It's Sid Avery, he started stripping with his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Every man needs a pair of dikes in his home. Auto flower farmer. I figured people might might give me some shit. That's all. Father right. Mike's in the house. What's up, Father Mike? Hey, Norwegian bro. Frog. It was cool to have Norwegian Frog come on the roundtable call in on Discourse. It was cool to hear his voice. It was cool, actually. I agree. He was nervous for like maybe the first 15 seconds, but then he got into it. <laughs> the Spanish yeah. Frog. It's a yeah, sexier right? alter ego. Spanish. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. I'm going to make sure I tie this kind of. Canadian closet grower. Are you Ottawa here? Is that is that like a Canadian joke for I'm out of here, or is that just saying I am from Ottawa here? <laughs> Either way, it's funny. I mean, well, actually, only one way it's funny. The other way is just a statement of fact in geography. Uh, but in either case, how's that light going, Pedro? It is just about tied, twisted here, or we're twisted up. I think. I think I, I might. I do. I have done. a report oh, from shit. chat. What does chat say? Everyone is on the edge of their, their seats anticipating this light. It's a, um, there was one other event that garnered this much excitement and that was the Oscars. No, so people are stoked. Are we? Okay. So this is together. I, I need to go grab the screws and the screw gun to secure this. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably a good idea. Um, what I usually like to do is at least put a, a screw in each corner, about four screws, so that I can kind of safely flip it upside down and give it a quick power test. That way I don't put all 20 screws back in and find out that I have a problem. I'm just taking a look at things to make sure nothing's in the way. And again, I'll have to be right back. Yeah, no problem. I usually, uh, I usually like to put it down from the power side, so... The power side, is that what's on the other side there? 
Uh, yeah, I'd rotate uh, it 24 or, de- or I'd I'd rotate 180 degrees. Set that set that lid on there. Set, rotate the, the whole like yeah, set yeah, just like that. 24. But the the majority of the wires are right there by the AC receptacle, so there might be something kind of binding up. All right, I'll check it out. DOG, thanks for sending that email over. Can I put the link up for the deburring tool, Organic Heads LED? Um, the deburr, uh, the deburring tool, the drill bit tool, Organic Heads. I can, uh, dog. I got, uh, I got quite a few emails from you guys here. Um, oh, okay. Summer pictures. Uh, I can, uh, now I have a Pedro shirt. I need the grandma's hat. Um, we can exchange gifts. Um, sure, Mike. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to find a way to get them online so that I don't have to ship everyone myself and be driving to USPS every day. Uh, that's kind of hold up is just um, uh, inability. Well, it a little to... tight fit when you put this all. Together? Yeah, it's a, it's okay. a, it's a real tight fit. It almost kind of wedges in there, Pedro. Okay. All right. Good. Um, it's fine, but if then. you can, yeah, if you can get the back end in and all the AC stuff's tucked in, I'd put one screw in each corner and then we can put a power cord in it and fire it up, man. Okay. 10, four. I'll be right back. Cool. 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 Yeah. There's four emails here. Oh, here it is. It's the third one pods. Oh, ah, interesting. Is this a whole PDF or this is just one page? Let's have a look here. Screen share. We'll do a, we'll, we'll feast a gander on this dude. Present to everyone. Should be on me. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is broadcasted to everybody. Let's assume it is canopods, 10 by 40 grow house, a door on the side. You got a newt room and an entry room. That's pretty smart. And you got a veg on the left, 180 square feet, and 180 square feet of uh, flower on the right. Floor drain, ceiling outlet. Looks pretty dope, Doug. Looks pretty dope, if I do say so myself. Talking about my, my pant leg. S- structural insulated pane sip. Oh, and some I beams. I dig it, homeboy. Just showing your logo. Yeah, Sid. Damn. Yeah, uh, Google. I guess I am upgrading computers, but my computer would not like. It was just sitting there on trying to square sheen, square sheen, slurring. Share screen. Wouldn't do it. Are you enjoying a an adult oh, beverage again? Just one though, but I'm already slurring after just one. It happens. I think it's just excitement. I, t- I was telling everybody on Instagram, it's you know, one little drink isn't gonna make you slur. I think it's just excitement. Yeah. I'm just feeling the the Holy Spirit of LEDs just inside me. I'm trying to get this fucking screw into this hole. You know, and the screw just doesn't want to go in this home. What do you should give your fucking home? This is why I don't build my smell. <laughs> it does take a lot of patience, guys. It does. Budsy really grower. Does. It really does. And that's one thing that I don't have very much of is patience. Hey, it worked. There you go. Yeah, there you go, Pedro. One in each corner should get it, and hopefully we can make some light. Put a little hair around it. Shh. Woody is the man. Pedro is on the Everclear. How do you think he's going? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't drink that stuff if you paid me, man. <laughs> Greets from Germany, Mabrick. Cheers, man. Dude, it worked. All right. Oh, now I got to find a goddamn power cord. Yeah, you never shipped me one, so I didn't ship one back. It's a common cord, though, right? It is. It'll just take me another three to five minutes. That's okay. Okay. That's, That's okay. Fun. We are, our viewers are climaxing, though. I uh, bet they are. Attempting to. So. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> no pressure. No it's pressure. I'll be there in a minute. All right. Yeah, I ended up having, you guys probably will see on the screen here, this light had nine freaking fans in it. And it had nine drivers as well. Each driver had its own separate 12 volt power supply for the fan. Uh, but nine drivers in an LED that you know only makes like 500 watts. I thought that was kind of crazy, but that's how they do overseas. They give you these little 700 milliamp, 500 milliamp, tiny little drivers that are you know 80 volts or whatever they are. And they just give you like nine of them or 10 of them. But um, I had to end up cutting out a little space where the fan was here. Uh, to give it a little bit more airflow, you know. I love when I overestimate on the time. No, you're perfect, dude. You know, I was just telling everybody that uh, you know I had to take the restrictor plate off uh, the old Red Dragon to give her a little more juice, you know. <laughs> give the Red Dragon juice some more juice. I think I messed that line up, but uh, it's in the ballpark. Is Power Draw the same? Uh, may need a bigger cord. Um, yeah, so Shredder, it's funny. I think most people overbuild stuff. The, they have a tendency to use a larger gauge wire than they actually need for the application. And um, you can look all that stuff up. You can Google a guy that says, you know, if you're running a 20 amp, how much, what gauge wire, at what length, how long it will it go, et cetera, et cetera. So um, a power draw on a light like this, that's a, you know, 400 some odd watts. Dude, you could go like 18, you could go 18 gauge, 20 gauge even on the AC wire all day and have no problem, 10, 12 feet. But um, this is probably a 14 gauge um, computer power supply type of cable, which is pretty common, pretty common. My Rockford Fosgate punch, 250 keep blowing out my LED. Should I turn down the gains? <laughs> OG brick. Now that's now that's where it becomes a little different. When you when you start stepping into a car audio, 12 volt, you know, 200 amp, that's when you start getting the one aught, you know, and the two gauge and the four gauge and the beefy stuff. Same with with uh with uh photovoltaics and solar panels and stuff. You gotta really beef beef the wire up. How's it looking, Pedronius? All three of the fans are running. Okay, so bo but both switches are in the off position, correct? That is correct. All right, so rule number one, and this isn't anything, this is just in general, is um, you never want an LED facing down on some kind of textile carpet or fabric when you turn it on. Obviously, I haven't turned it on yet, but uh, let's find a spot where we can maybe prop it up, um, maybe perpendicular to the camera so it doesn't just completely wash out your webcam. Probably does it like away from your stomach right now. Well, I can stand it, but I'm scared uh, to walk. Uh, that, well, that's fine. That's fine. We'll tell you what's going on. I can step behind it here. Yeah, step step behind it. Now turn the uh, potentiometers to, uh, it would be all the way counterclockwise, which I guess you're upside down, but that shouldn't change. That'll turn them all the way down just so when we fire it up. All right, they're all the way to the left or counterclockwise. Right. Uh, go ahead and flip, flip your switches one by one. Do you want the flower or the vegetative? They're both all, both, they're both, doesn't matter? No, it doesn't matter. I just want to see if it'll make light. Okay, cool. And the, right. other one. the other one. Oh. That's the cobs. Wow. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I got to put on my, my sunglasses and kind of look at a side. Is it bright? I, yeah, oh, fuck yeah, it's bright. Yeah, it's pretty bright. Is, is that with it dim? Now, twist the knobs again. Let's see if we can get it to dim a little bit. <laughs> That's all. Oh, no. Down. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's literally all the way down. Wowzers. Okay, so I see the the I see like a man. I see like a snowman kind of look. Is that two little. Is that better? Yeah, uh, that's that's better. Yeah. Um. <laughs> now turn it up. Is that all the way up or down? No, this is all the way down. Okay, turn both channels up quickly. Well, this is that's the center, and this is there's that's all. The oh way my down. god. <laughs> <laughs> It is a street Ah, oh, dude, it's it looks street. like the dear yeah. Lord baby Jesus is like coming down from heaven and just smiling it is upon. Extremely fucking bright. Holy shit. Baby. <laughs> three by three. And this is only four, 420 from the wall? It's a 420 God, or 440. Damn. I can't remember, but um, I'm sure the webcam is compensating a bit because the room is fairly dark. Um, but 
It looks bright it's, from here, Holmes. It's extremely bright. Yeah, I don't know if I can turn it any better for you guys to see. Yeah, it's extremely, extremely bright. That that shield board is sweet looking, dude. I really like the color in it. I just put it, because it is such a red blend, and ah. it also has the UV and the 450 nanometer. I mean, it's a full balance spectrum, but it does lean on the pinker side. I just put it on its own separate dial, and then the outside corners are, uh, are on there. So if you really want to um slow growth you know you would turn down the chilled board um and those are 3500k varos okay good and there's 150 160 watts of that uh no more like 200 216 watts worth of that and um then wow. there's about 200 220 watts worth of chilled in the center so it's pretty balanced between the varos and the chilled um kind of a 50 50 ratio bringing the whole spectrum probably up uh eh, hard to say hard to say probably around i don't know 3k with a lot of pink in it okay but yeah, you I can have, veg i yeah. have to stay behind this thing it's it's yeah right <laughs> <laughs> cool all right i'm gonna power down so you guys can maybe see yeah i shouldn't have looked at it i looked at it for a brief second with my eyes and that's all i see now Cool, man. Well, it looks pretty cool. I think the color balance, I don't know if you noticed this, but um, I the original plate was recessed in that white perimeter by about a half inch. And when you're talking about a grow light that's this thin, sure. there, there's not a lot of real estate in there, as you could tell when you opened it up. So I put that plate on the front, but I painted the original back plate orange so that it would have like a, do you, did you notice it's like a little detail? I did, I, yeah. I thought that looked pretty cool, especially because most of your photography on Instagram and stuff is at that kind of, you know, that angle. So hopefully the light will photograph well for you. I think it's going to be a great like seed to to bud light, you know, with a lot of flexibility, but it will be limited at a three by three. That's and exactly what we planned. That's partly just due to the wattage and it's partly just due to the geometry of the fixture. I mean, the thing's only like 18 by 18 or something, right? I think it's 20 by 20, I think is what the physical dimensions. Oh, that's right, that's right. Okay, my plate is 18 by 18. Uh, and I had to snug those cobs in to coincide with the holes in the steel. That was one thing about this light. The plates were steel. So it wasn't like cutting through that aluminum butter. It was, um, sure. It was steel, but um, yeah, hopefully it'll hold up pretty well for you. I would go ahead and face the light flat down uh, back on its face and just leave it there on the table overnight if you're crashing out pretty soon and that'll ensure it really sets up good. That little flash of heat was probably really good for it um, in curing and th and that's, that's I don't know, that actually could be right or wrong, but I feel like um, with other thermal pastes at least, once you get them hot, they really start to spread out and uh, you can actually sometimes put a little more torque uh, on your LED boards after you've uh, heat cycled the thermal once. But um, yeah, I think it shouldn't be a problem. Let it sit up for a day, man, and um, you know, hang it in the tent. I wasn't a big fan of those hanging loops, but like I said, there wasn't a lot of real estate for me to do anything else with it. So there's not no. It's all hanging by this back plate. Yeah, I'd almost suggest, you know, I think the light's pretty special and I think it's something you can have for a long time. And I would suggest maybe um, going to get some S hooks, mm -hmm. you know, some nice stainless steel S hooks, ditch the hardware you have now, slide the S hook through each of those, those brass eye bolts and maybe crimp it down tight. So at least your S hook is like firmly on there forever. It's not, mm -hmm. not going to slip off. And then maybe you could use something like a, a like some chain. You know, yeah. chain would work pretty well because, yeah, those I just felt like those wires were real thin and they're real tall. It adds like a like an eighteen inch try. Like, yeah, dude, yeah, it does. who's got that much height in their life? Agreed. Agreed. Not me. Well, I, I actually do, but I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, well, uh, I think I've culminated for the evening. I don't know about you, Pedro. I'm ecstatic, man. Cool. Well, I sincerely appreciate you coming by, even though, I mean, our, our agenda was obviously to get this light up and running, but, uh, you know, I think we had some, uh, definitely some goofs and some good times. And, um, I think we talked about some cool stuff, man. I think we did too. You got to see a redneck that's not prepared for this kind of fix it a little bit. 
<laughs> yeah, Papa Gross is trying to extend the stream. He's like, but what? But Gromouch, what about the rest of the screws, man? <laughs> right? <laughs> Keep the stream going, man. There's like 22 more screws. Uh, Dog, yeah, dude. Um, I I didn't want to come up here for like two hours. Uh, I just wanted to pop in here for a little bit, hang out with everybody. It's eight o'clock on a Sunday night here on the West Coast, which means it's it's getting down. It's getting pretty late there on the East Coast. So uh, we're going to shut it down for the night, folks. Uh, appreciate everybody coming in to hang out. And, um, you know, Pedro, thank you very much, dude. You got any shouties or any anything you want to talk about going on this week? No, I mean, we got the whatever show over on Twitch on Tuesday. But, um, but other than that. I will turn notifications on for that on Twitch on Tuesday. Twitch Tuesday, six o'clock Mountain Time. And Shag is there a little more freedom over there on Twitch to kind of get into some raws and stuff? And it seems like it at this point in time, as long as it's legal for me, Twitch is okay with it. So, uh, yeah, like a bit of the turning point between Twitch and YouTube. So it's a shame, but it's um, in this digital age that we're in, it's getting a little harder to like stand your ground on a platform that can yank your footing out yeah. from under you at the blink. You yeah. just went. Everybody's maxed. telling me to. Well, you know, you can twitch. You know, get a hold of my twitch. What's that? Oh, everybody's saying you can get a hold of my twitch and what, or Twitter and whatnot. But I, I only have you know the seven thousand followers that I have. I don't carry a ton of clout in the YouTube world. Yeah, but it always sucks starting over. I mean, ask these guys like Mr. Tight and others oh, that no. have. Well, I, I did appeal. I appealed my my video, and uh, they upheld their decision. So. Oh. It is what it is, man. And for 90 days, so Twitch it is. All right. Well, um, now that I know, I'll turn on my notifications and uh, say goodbye to our 376 people still hanging out on the Sunday night. I uh, just want to wish everybody, um, hopefully you guys have a great week, you know, a nice productive week and, um, you know, be positive and get a bumper sticker that's got kind of a reggae flag. On the back, it says positive is how I live on it. And slap that on your minivan and see if people don't give you a smile when you cruise down the road. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.